retail prices of two kilogram of unga has gone up. Ngano, which is basically chapati, has equally gone up. Bread, cooking oil, potatoes, palm prices for, of course, petrol, diesel, kerosene, and obviously fares have gone up. Cooking gas has gone up, making it a challenge for many of our people to, like I said, to put food on the table and even to move around. The first measure or intervention is removal of import duty and levies on maize. The government has suspended all import duty and levies on imported maize and animal feeds. Individual businessmen are therefore free to bring in to the country maize to bridge the anticipated deficit of 2.2 million bags. The waiver is only for 540,000 metric tons, which is equivalent to 6 million bags of white maize for two months, the month of July and August, before the next harvest. It is important for us to appreciate, even understand why you're talking about the next harvest. Because we're expecting the next harvest to be there at the end of uh, August. And therefore, we cannot flood in the market, yet we're just about to, to harvest. And therefore, the two-month window is to allow for harvesting to take place. So once maize has come back into the market, then there will be no more importation. The importation of this quantity of maize will certainly bring down the prices of unga, because even farmers who have been hoarding maize will be forced to release their produce to the market. Of course, there is what you'd call artificial shortage that comes about because some of our farmers want to create and a situation that uh, there is no maize in the country, so that uh, the prices can go up and then they release them at uh, you know, very high prices. So when this maize that the government has allowed to be imported in, six million bags comes into the country, they will be forced to also release into the market, or else they'll be selling their maize at almost you know, no, no profit at all. So by doing so, we expect that the prices of unga will definitely come down significantly. The other intervention is fertilizer and input subsidy. Now, recognizing the challenge of escalating in input prices, the government released, has released 5.8 billion shillings to subsidize farmers and, and, and for subsidize fertilizer and other input costs to increase access by farmers so as to encourage higher yields and to stabilize farm produce prices. Of course, you're aware when this was done, uh, not so long ago, 5.8 billion has been injected in to help farmers access uh, not cheap but affordable uh, fertilizers as well as um, you know, other inputs, seeds, and other requirements. Now, this subsidy comes in this form, that the farmer pays 60% and the government pays 40% meaning that uh, there's a cushioning of about 40% that the government now you know, uh, takes care of, that otherwise would have been taken care of by the general public. So that 40% now, together with other measures that we are going to talk about, including the one that I just mentioned, definitely will conspire to bring the prices of uh, unga further down and other, of course, other products as well. The government has released 3.5 billion to tea and sugar sectors to help boost production and to pay farmers arrears. Out of this uh, 3.5 billion, 1 billion will be directed to fertilizer subsidy in the tea sector. Another 1.5 billion will be to pay arrears of the farmers, including factory maintenance. And another 1 billion will be directed at ensuring that uh, these interventions are implemented because implementation has got a cost element to it as well. And therefore, this one billion is to ensure that uh, all these interventions that have been rolled out by the government to cushion our people are implemented when they should. Looking out for alternative markets for wheat. Now, alternative sources of wheat are being considered by the government. This is because no one can predict when the conflict between 
these two countries, Ukraine and Russia, will come to an end. Subsequently, several countries have been identified as alternative sources from where millers are already being encouraged to import from. And they are going to import uh, an equivalent of 2 million metric tons per month to meet local demand. You may be aware that this 2 million metric tons that we need for wheat has been coming from Russia and Ukraine. And because of the sanctions and the conflict, now this cannot happen. And therefore, what we are seeing, the cost of bread or the price of bread in the supermarkets are going up because of this reason. And therefore, the government is saying is that uh, the millers who mill, you know, ungangano to produce bread are now allowed to go out there and get wheat from alternative sources. But at the same time, there is also a waiver of duty from 35% to 10%. As governments, once all these measures, some of them have already been implemented or being implemented, but others are going to be implemented from today, especially suspension of uh, you know, uh, levies and the waiver from 1st of July. So once that one is effected, we expect to see a lot of maize coming into the country and certainly in the next one week or so, prices of unga will start coming down. And that will go on until August when it will now be at the lowest when you know, local harvest you know, is, is also effected. So expect the next one week going forward, the prices of unga to start uh, coming down. Equally the same, the prices of uh, edible oil will start coming down now that Indonesia is exporting uh, to other countries, including Kenya. Those are, you know, those were bottlenecks or challenges that were there before that now are being overcome.